And hi, welcome to Starfield. Today we're going to be talking all things outposts. We're going to set up an entire outpost network of 23 outposts, thanks to a wonderful post on Reddit by Mr. Claus Cosplay, which I will link in the description below. Uh, I will also link to a spreadsheet that I've used that puts a bit more detail on exactly how I've set up the distribution network. But first, a bug which has been bothering a bunch of people and there didn't seem to be a solution for it, so I did some tinkering. Now, you may have set up an outpost network and uh, set up an interstellar cargo link. We'll talk about how to set those up properly later. And it brings in 500 items like this one. And then when it gets to the destination, it drops off like 10 or 20 or 30 things and then returns and starts dumping stuff in the incoming bay on the other side. And it's incredibly frustrating. Well, here is the solution. Uh, you'll see here that when it comes in it had 500 now instead of unloading all 500 it's done 466. I believe the reason for this to be that uh, the cargo bay that receives it or the incoming cargo box that receives it only has a capacity of 300 and even if you link that to other items uh, it still won't unload the entire amount so the way that I fixed it was to use the console mode. Now this means if you're on Xbox there isn't going to be a great solution for you. You're just going to have to ensure that there's never more than 300 items in your cargo ship, which actually isn't that hard. It's just if you're relocating or have a late setup, uh, it can sometimes get out of control. However, this is what you do. You open the console either with the at key or the tilde key or the back tick key. Uh, there's details on that. Just have a search for Starfield console mode. Click on the container and type set AV carry weight 500. I'll put that into the description as well so you can just copy and paste it. Uh, and you'll see that the mass there has gone from 300 or 330 to 550. That's because I've got the payload skill. Uh, which adds 10% to your cargo ship, but also to these, strangely. Anyway, I'm just uh, quickly setting up some containers and attaching them to the incoming. You'll see here, I click on these and put uh, from the incoming to each of those different types of containers, solid, liquid, and gas. And then we wait for the thing to come in. It's coming back from Androphon with 500 in the cargo bay. Here we go. And now, da -da 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 -da, it's actually going to unload all 500 which is extremely wonderful. You'll see it doesn't always unload everything into all the chests, but eventually it'll get there. The point is it's dumped it all from the ship, which is great. And the next time the ship comes, what it'll do is flush it out of the incoming and into the proper places. Uh, and you can have a look here. It wasn't just aluminium. There's also some sealant, some fiber. There was some argon, I think, alongside the helium. Uh, and there was no liquid. I didn't think there would be, which is why I only put a small one there, just in case. Um, but that is how to fix that particular error. Now, the skills you'll need for a max uh, outpost are pretty straightforward. In social, you're going to need outpost management at least at level one. Uh, so additional cargo links can be placed at outposts. This will let you place six instead of three. You can take it all the way to level four so the outpost, project, uh, outpost extractors produce twice as fast. Nothing in combat. You can see I've gone very heavy into science. Surveying is useful and zoology and botany uh, you'll want at least a level one uh, but generally higher because it will allow you to scan animals and plants so much quicker at the top level you can complete them in four scans. Uh, scanning is useful because you'll be able to find uh, things on moons and I also went with weapon engineering because it lets you turn an okay weapon into an awesome one and then outpost engineering you absolutely uh, need that at level three uh, to get everything and then planetary habitation level four so that you can get the extra 16 outposts and build outposts on the uh, weirder planets. Special projects, bottom right on the previous tab, uh, science, you'll also need for building all the weird wacky components and leveling up. It's good for farming experience. And then piloting and uh, ship tech are great for building a class C ship with good weapons and a huge cargo space. Although you can kind of make the frontier do a pretty good job. Now this is the spreadsheet that I will link in the link, uh, put in the description below. <laughs> link in the description below. Uh, Leonis is my main hub. Each of the bold ones at the top of the sub hubs which Leonis links to and then underneath each of those they link to two or three other hubs and I'll show you a setup of Leonis the master hub to start. So first things first we're just going to run around and check that all the incoming containers have 500 mass at least. You'll notice some of these have got 1000 or 1100 because of payload. Uh, that's when I was still experimenting with uh, trying to debug this issue um, and I didn't bother changing them back it really doesn't matter as long as it's set to 500 it's fine. Um, that one's not set to 500. I think that's uh, Catty did. So I think I uh, oh no, it is. Uh, I think I set Catty did to 500 as well. And we'll go and have a look at Catty did uh, after this and how that's set up. Then we'll have a look at an example of Fermi where we've got an interstellar and a local system link in the same planet. And then I'll set up an entire chain so you can see what's going down. Uh, but here you go, set AV, carry weight 500 after activating the console and clicking on the container. Again, if you're on Xbox, this won't work. Um, and we'll look at some of the storage solutions that are available to you on Xbox. 
So first of all, you're going to have to set up containers for all your incoming loot. Now, when you set up a full network, you're going to get a ton of loot. You'll see in a minute. It's like 30, 40,000 I've managed to collect just uh, idling around. But what you'll need to do is put all these containers here and then link them to each other. So you just add links uh, down from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top, whichever you prefer. And then you find the incoming container. That's the outgoing one. Uh, there's the incoming one and link it to the beginning of the chain, which in this case was the top. And then items will come in, they'll go into that container and they'll work their way down and they'll slowly fill up. Uh, you're going to need to do that for solids, liquids and gases. But here are my containers that I've changed. I've just put 5 million storage on them because I couldn't be build bothered building stacks. On my original one, Androphon, I had hundreds and hundreds of containers and it just became unmanageable. So if you can use the console, I strongly recommend doing this. The other advantage is that you can then just go to one container and get everything should you need, like a delivery of aluminium to someone for 5,000. You can see here I've got 31,000 items here and they're just kind of accruing. Um, there's some stuff you'll need more than others. Uh, you'll work it out as you go, but aluminium, tungsten, nickel, iron, those are all pretty clear. But here you can I'll build a stack of uh, 30 here, which is going to allow for 9,000 storage, which if you come occasionally and sell the excess uh, is going to do you fine. Um, you can use the rotate button uh, when stuff snaps like this and it will rotate uh, rather than rotating, rather than turning it, it will snap to a different side of the uh, container that you're trying to lock it to. And then all you do is connect them top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, and then the bottom of one to the top of the next stack. And you've got like a big old chain of containers. But yeah, trying to find uh, individual elements in amongst those huge rack of containers is kind of a pain. Here's how I've set my helium up. Uh, so it's really important that your main hub has helium. It's gonna be powering all the other uh, interstellar links. Now, an interesting thing, here we go. There's a bunch of helium going into that gas tank and then they're all firing connecting to the gas tank at the back of the interstellar thing. Not the incoming, not the outgoing, but the back. That's really, really important. The blue container at the back, the helium container. Now, an interesting thing about these interstellar links is you only need helium at the link at which you set it up. So that means as long as you activate, or start all your cargo links from Leonis or whatever your main hub happens to be, you don't have to have any helium downstream. Uh, you will for the other links, but I'll explain how that works in a minute. So basically, all of those are linking to the back tank. Now, each one of these industrial container, uh, industrial extractors links to a large gas container here and then links to the outgoing tank, uh, the outgoing container on each of these pads. Now, that is going to be sending approximately 20 helium downstream every trip, which is enough to power two or three... Uh, cargo pads on the other side and I'll show you how that's set up. We're going to go to Catiad as I mentioned. Here we go. And you're going to land. And uh, here, so at Catiad what I've got is uh, for the incoming, uh, oh I've got some power there uh, to power the whole place. 72 seems like overkill, I can probably kill that reactor. Uh, but I've got uh, a couple of extractors that are linking to a solid state. And then this is the incoming one from Leonis. You can see that the incoming uh, box, so that's going to be the helium coming in, connects to this gas tank here. And that connects to the back uh, fuel tanks on the other two interstellar pads. Not the one back to Leonis. That's really important. Don't do that or it'll start to get really confused and you'll get helium mixed up. Uh, I've extended this tank to 55,000. You don't really need to. You can just stack three or four on top of each other. I'm just being lazy. Um, and each of those you'll see uh, connects here. So there we go. There is a line uh, coming from that tank to uh, from that big gas tank to the gas tank on the back of the cargo pad, but not the one from the onus and over to the other side as well there. And that is going to provide enough fuel to run those indefinitely. You do not need to send any more helium downstream anywhere. That's your lot. Um, and that gas tank at the back will just fill up. You can tweak it. You can switch it from an industrial to a commercial and play around with levels. Unfortunately, this system doesn't have filtering yet. Uh, but you'll see here we've got one going to Linnaeus and one going to, I think, Hugens. Uh, the one to Linnaeus is doing silver. And I've actually got some notes that say I need a bit more silver because you can never have enough zero wire. Uh, but these, uh, the incoming from those will go to these three small tanks here. One liquid, one gas, one solid. And then uh, same here. They link there, and then those link to the outgoing on the one back to Leonis. So incoming uh, from the two that are going out, or bringing stuff back, going to the outgoing on Leonis, which will ship everything back to Leonis. So basically, we've got this kind of fan. So everything bubbles back to Leonis eventually. There we are. 
So we're going to go take a look at Linnaeus and see what is set up there. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. This is the end of the chain. Um, so it's just going to be a very simple little, uh, very simple little <laughs> outpost. Here we go. Uh, we've got a greenhouse here uh, just to add a bit of complexity to the mix. I always put a big landing pad in. Um, and here is our interstellar one. You'll notice it's got no helium there. It doesn't need it. Remember, it's got helium at the takeoff pad. So as long as you start the link from Catty did, you never need to put helium downstream here. We've got a water extractor. Uh, that's going into a little water tank. You'll see why when we get a slightly more complex setup and then that's going into a greenhouse. The greenhouse is generating high tensile spidrian, spidroin, which is going into a solid storage box, which goes into the outgoing tank on the cargo link. We're also farming some lead. And then over here is some silver. Uh, and I'm just putting another silver extractor down there because I need a little bit more silver. And I hook that up to there, which is linked again to the outgoing on the cargo pad, which will take it back to Catty Did. At Catty Did, it will get transferred to the outgoing on the Leonis pad and it will make it back to Leonis. Here we are. And this is where you can just go to there on the uh, greenhouse to change what you're farming. We're going to have a quick look at uh, Fermi as well. This is a slightly complicated one because we've got an interstellar link. You'll notice there's two outposts in the same system. Uh, there's Fermi 7, that's just got an, a system link. And then we've got Fermi 3 with a system link and a uh, interstellar link. And you can see I've named it, I've put an I in to remind me which one that is. So here we go. Here is the interstellar link. No helium again, because it's coming from, uh, the link has been set up from its hub, which I think is uh, beta or future or something. Anyway, we are getting, this is getting a little bit complex here. So we've got incoming, the incoming from the local cargo link going to the outgoing on the uh, interstellar link. So again, we take stuff in from somewhere and send it out somewhere else. So that's going to slowly make its way back to Leonis. Uh, and then we have uh, vanadium and then the two greenhouses which are making sealant and cosmetic. They're sending it into that box and sending it back to uh, there. And then we've got a bunch of water extractors putting water into there to feed the greenhouses. Now, we're also sending water out via the uh, local cargo link. So I've got a solid and a liquid storage there. The greenhouses are spitting fiber into that um, and the water is going in. See, I've got two generating fiber there and then the water. And that's all getting sent out of the outgoing link. There we go. Back to Fermi 7A. And then Fermi 7A is going to be making uh, platinum, palladium and I want to say memory substrates. It'll be in the name. You'll see I name them. There we go. Yeah, memory substrates. So then here we've got, uh, this looks like a mess, but it's actually not. So we've got fiber and water coming in. Uh, we're also mining uh, platinum and palladium there. And they're going into the storage uh, for solids. And then I've got three uh, animal husbandries, two bigs and a small. And they're basically taking the fiber and the water that's coming in from Fermi 3 into those two boxes on the left. They're using those up and they're generating memory substrates. And the only reason I've got so many of these is just because I want to make sure that I burn all the fiber and water that's coming in. I don't want to get too big a backlog um, because because you can't say only send if there's you know a low amount or only mine if there's a low amount. Uh, things will fill up very quickly. So I'd rather burn all the resources um, and just send back too much memory substrate. I can always sell it if I need to. And you can see there it's waiting for fiber to come in. So when the next ship comes in, it'll bring, I think, 12 fiber pretty much processes it before it ships out um, and we're done. Happy days. There we go. The liquid and the solid storage. And you can see this funny spinning thing here. There's a bug sometimes where when you go into uh, the high up view mode, when you're doing outposts, it doesn't let you put anything down. You can just do a quick save and a quick load and it'll fix it. Um, so that's absolutely fine. But you can see here the outgoing, it's sending memory substrates and other bits and pieces back. Now we're going to look at, oh, it was Zeta uh, Ofuchi. Uh, that is where Catty did, sorry, where Fermi uh, sends its goods. So here at Fermi, uh, here at Zeta Ofuchi, uh, we're farming some little bits and pieces. I've got some wind generators there. There's an animal husbandry going on. Uh, I forget what I'm making. But you can see here there's a cargo link, uh, three cargo links, inter-system all. That one goes back to Leonis Master. So everything is going into the incoming there. Oh, sorry, the outgoing there from the incoming on the other two. That one is going to Hugens and that one's going to Fermi. 
So Fermi's bringing two th uh, things back from two uh, two outposts within the system, and Huygens or Huygens is bringing it back from one. Uh, so basically, what you always want to do is link uh, the incoming to the three separate storages, solid, liquid, gas, and link those solid, liquid, gas to the outgoing on the one linking back to your master hub. And this is one of the earlier ones because you see I'm not pooling all the water, I'm doing separate uh, water extractors for each one. I don't know what I was thinking there. There's absolutely no need. And you'll notice that there are a bunch of options for power, but more often than not, advanced wind generators are about the cheapest for the power. I've seen them produce up to 25 power. Uh, typically they'll do 10 or 14 very easily. If not, the advanced solars can do 10, 20. Um, but yeah, uh, the advanced power solutions aren't all that necessary. Now we're going to have a quick look at... Uh, where are we? Oh, we're still at Zeta Refugee. We're just having a look at how uh, everything's set up here. So you'll see I've got uh, gas coming in from Leonis here. I think there's really rather too much. Yeah, another 1400 or so. And then that's just connecting out to the backs of these two. Remember the tanks, not the incoming or the outgoing. So they connect. And that's going to be enough to power your... I can probably again take that one down to a commercial at Leonis. And that will be more than enough to power your outposts. See, 1400 helium. Way too much. I can definitely back it down. All right, let's have a look at building a link from the beginning. We're going to start off with Beta Turnion. Uh, at Beta Turnion, so the things you're going to need generally when you're building are aluminium, <laughs> iron, tungsten, nickel, tantalum, sealant, fluorine, membranes, benzene, beryllium, polymer, plutonium, titanium, and lots and lots of constructed items, which is why the special project skill is so useful, although you can buy them from a bunch of different places. But honestly, if you're going deep into outposts, you may as well just craft them. It's worth sticking a hab on your ship with a um, workbench in it as well, just in case you run out of stuff while you're on planet, and then you can easily craft. Uh, or, of course, you can just craft a workbench on the outpost. I also got an achievement there for um, getting 100 planets. But here is an outpost from the beginning. So we're looking around. All we need here, uh, mining-wise, is lithium. So you may have noticed in the top left where I was looking around, it showed you what items were available. We'll have a look at that again in a minute. Uh, then you plop your outpost down. Look for somewhere flat, typically, because that will make it easier to build. And when you're done, don't forget to rename the outpost to remind you what is actually there. So here it is uh, lithium, and then I'm going to get structural and stimulants. And I ran out of space because these are uh, short. So struct, sim, or struct, sim, and li. Structural, stimulant, and lithium. So now what we need to do is research the plants or the animals which give the items. So basically this is where the botany and zoology skills come in useful. At level one you need them to build a greenhouse and an animal husbandry, but at level four they will let you scan everything with just four scans. So what you want to do is basically activate your scanner, run around, scan everything. Now you get an outpost resource boost if you scan any planet to 100%. Um, oh, and I leveled up, that's nice. We'll use that level in a minute. Um, I was also using a gun that I'd found, which I thought might be good. I think the mag pulse rifle or something like that, but it's really not. There's the stimulant. It's the bristle banal or something, and I think that's the structural, the wanderer's husk. Um, so they were both plants in this case, which is pretty good. But this is the uh, explodey coachman that I've got. That's plus 30% against beasts. I love it. Um, this is where weapon engineering is really useful, because you can find a nice weapon and just put on all the mods, generally high-powered, armor-piercing, something like that. Well, add... 20-30% to the weapons. Now you can see if I could be bothered I would go and find the other creature. I think it's in another biome but it's always worth seeking out uh, some traits as well. Uh, aim for natural stuff or life signs because uh, it's 200 experience. I mean it's pretty decent experience for just clicking a scan button. Uh, and then oh, I think I broke my leg there. Sprain. Um, but then you can always just fast travel back to uh, your outpost. So there we are. We've uh, scanned everything that we need to, uh, so now we can get on with building. So we're putting down a lithium extractor there. You put it down in the coloured block that appears, not chlorosanes. There we go, lithium. Come on, you can do it. Uh, then we're going to put down, I like to put these near the outpost, a small solid uh, storage uh, just near the outpost block. And then we're going to link them. 
So you put a link from the output uh, from the extractor to the container. Then we're going to get a landing pad. Uh, I always put down a big landing pad. Uh, just to be able to land my ship nearby so that if I'm overweight I don't have to go very far uh, I don't have to run and then put down an inter-system cargo link and again I like to put this near the outpost thing so that I can just jump on it to debug it by uh, fast traveling in um, now the next thing that we do is there we go uh, power it up Oh, don't forget to link the uh, box to the outgoing on the cargo system link. Then we're going to put down the greenhouses because we need structural and stimulant. You can get greenhouses in three different sizes and they all use the same amount of power, which is crazy. So if you ever need more of something, just go up a size on the greenhouse. Um, and they, all the places you can build greenhouses generally also produce water. So it's kind of really easy to do. I don't need a lot of structural or stimulant, so I'm just putting down two small ones. You'll notice they're both producing stimulant at the moment. So don't hook them up yet, because when you change what they produce, it undoes all the connections for some insane reason. I don't know why. Uh, but put down one small uh, or one commercial water extractor and one small liquid storage. Feed the extractor into the storage and the storage. Uh, yeah, see, I've undone it. And the storage into the greenhouses. But first of all, set the greenhouses up to be uh, producing the item that you want. So you go over here to the control panel and there's a control panel on the animal husbandry buildings as well uh, that does the same. So one is structural and one is stimulant. And in outpost mode, you can actually mouse over them and you'll see what they're producing. They're structural, see, and stimulant. So then that's it, they're set up. Now we hook those to the box, which is already pointing to the outgoing on the cargo link. And then the only thing we're missing is power and maybe some robots. So on on planets where I'm just going to put down a reactor there, I think. Oh no, wind turbine. Yeah, that, that's a 25. So it's like a no-brainer, super cheap. Um, I also on planets where there are animals, I tend to always put down six dog robots, um, just because they'll pretty much defend against anything. It's super annoying if you get an extractor destroyed. And then the other thing I like to do before I leave is jump in my ship, take off, and then land back at the outpost. So you'll see here, we're just going to take off, pium, pium. Uh, and just make sure that the landing pad is positioned effectively. It's pretty, I want to say uncommon, but actually it's probably 50-50. That uh, the for whatever reason, the outpost or the landing pad is in a weird position that the ship doesn't like and won't land on it. You can see there, it's not in the right zone. So here, I basically just moved it around a bit. Um, I ended up spending way too long on this but yeah just move it to somewhere where there isn't too much stuff and then if you think there's anything a bit close to it so I ended up putting it here and I was like well that landing pad's probably a bit closer what I'll do is move the landing pad and then the reason I always put the security robots down last is because they walk under stuff and you can't put stuff down when they're there that's actually overlapping me but I think there's a robot under here and it's just super annoying there you can hear them shooting as well at the moment uh, I don't know what probably that rabbit or rabbit probably that crab <laughs> anyway uh, eventually I find a spot to put this down and you don't have to redo any of the links you'll see that the red link is moving as I move it around there we go that'll do now I'm a bit unhappy with that because it's quite a high gravity planet and it's also got quite a high foundation so it means I can't just jetpack to the top and I have to run up the stairs like a chump but then off we go take off again repeat and uh, there we go. The building is on. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the building. The ship is on the building. Uh, now, you just want to do a sanity check before you leave. Uh, make sure that items are actually going into the uh, interstellar system link. So we'll have a quick look at that. So basically, you want to ideally jetpack your way up here if the foundation is low. But unfortunately, as I said, because the... <laughs> gravity is so high I have to run up the stairs like a fool but there we go everything's going and we've got stimulant lithium and structural material going in there so now we're going to go upstream to the next uh, stop which is uh, Decoran I think there it is yeah Decoran um, and this is going to be our intermediate hub now actually this place generates helium although I wouldn't recommend trying to get helium here and you can see I used that skill I just got to upgrade scanning to the final level so I can actually identify the vitinium. I thought that this map meant that helium was everywhere. 
Uh, it's not. It's really not. I must have spent 45 minutes running around looking for a spot that uh, had all four things that I need because we're getting uranium, iridium, vitinium and helium here. Again, you don't need helium. It was completely pointless. I just had it in my head that I wanted another helium outpost. But the amount that I'm producing at uh, Leonis is ridiculous. And because this only uses 23 outposts, you'll notice on my spreadsheet, I also had Lantana, which has atmospheric helium, which you could use to ferry anywhere if you, for some reason, didn't have enough. But as it is, uh, you run around, see on the top left, it shows you what available resources there are at any given point. Uh, you run around looking for the ones that you want. Here we got Iridium, Uranium, there we go, Vitinium and Helium 3. Happy days, all four. But honestly, I had so many landing spots. I also recommend you quick save before looking for stuff because otherwise you'll just have a planet covered in landing spots. And that way, once you find a good spot, you can just reload uh, and go straight to the place you know. Anyway, what you then want to do is for each of the extractors, work out where the items are. There's the Vitinium. So we're going to put that down. There's the uranium. Good. There's the iridium. Where is it? Where's the iridium? It's in the middle there. And then the helium is over to the side up there. Now, we don't need too much helium here. We basically only need two extractors, one to power the system links uh, and one to power the generators. Of course, you could use anything for power. You could use a reactor if that's the way you wanted to go. Um, we're going to put down our landing pad first. There we go. And you can see that I'm basically running out of iron. I'm going to need to make three system links, one to Leonis, one to uh, the place we just set up, whose name I've already forgotten, uh, Beta Tiernon. Uh, and then one's going out to Schrodinger later, but I won't show that. And then Schrodinger is going to be like Fermi with an inter-system link as well. Uh, so that'll be ferrying stuff back. So you can see I've got no iron. So what I did was use this opportunity to fly back to Leonis, pick up some iron. I could use the console mode to add it, honestly, but I'm kind of against that. Um, and then come back and test out the landing pad and make sure it's in the right place. Uh, and then when I got back, I renamed it to Decoran 7B. And then I think uh, HE3U IRYT. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Oh, VY, sorry. Iterbium. Oh, anyway, there we go. So now we've got uh, plenty of iron. We're going to spin this round. Oh, see, I've got the spinny bug, which means you can't play stuff. So just do a quick save and a quick load uh, and it will fix it. There we go. So now putting this down here, these are going to be my two uh, inbound links and I'm going to put the outbound one slightly off center just so when I come in and land, I'm not running around going, oh, which one's which? And it's always really obvious. There we go. So that will be the one back to Leonis. Now we are going to hook up and actually here I make a mistake which I will need to come back and fix later. I only create a solid box, but you should absolutely create a gas and a liquid as well, because I know on Schrodinger, even though at Beta Ternion, uh, we were only farming solids, at Schrodinger I'm going to be farming liquids and gases, I think as well, certainly liquids. Um, but here we go, we've put down the uranium, the uh, ytterbium and the iridium mines, uh, vitinium, sorry, uh, extractors. Uh, I need to come back and make another vitinium extractor too because it doesn't produce nearly enough. Hook those up there and then hook that to the outgoing, that's it, that one, the red one, on the link that is going to be back to Leonis. And then we're going to get some helium. We're going to put down an industrial one here at the back. And this is super annoying because there was a bunch of rocks in the way which actually made this spot pretty useless. Um, and then we're going to connect that to a gas storage tank. Oh, but not before we make, oh no, there we go, gas storage tank. And then connect that to the tanks here, one and two. Remember, you don't need to connect it to the one to Leonis because we've got gas at Leonis providing the link. Um, as long as you remember to set the link up from Leonis. Okay, so the incoming there goes there and the incoming there, green, goes to there happy days. So now everything is going into that box and being sent out to Leonis. Now we still need power and we could have, if you, I think I had a look, uh, there was no wind available because it's a moon with almost no uh, wind and the solar dome was only, or the solar yeah, dome was only producing four or five power. So I figured I'd go with fueled reactors. These run on helium, so it's great if you've got a helium rich planet. Uh, they only generate 20 each. And after I built this other commercial extractor to, or industrial extractor to fire them, I didn't realize it was actually going to add uh, <laughs> uh, 
power requirements. So I'm going to need 55 in total. So I end up adding a third one, you'll see at the end, and just put that through a tank, which will then spread out to all the others. An industrial one is enough, at least with double extraction rates, to um, generate for at least three uh, extractors, possibly four. And then what you want to do is just set up some sort of power system uh, to just see that only has, uh, I missed it, four power, I think. So I just put down a reactor here to generate 30 power, which I could have just done two of those, honestly. But connect that to this helium uh, extractor. So what you need to do is long hold uh, for extras, then click wire and wire it to that. And that will start pumping up and down, pump, pump, pump. It'll fill those and eventually you'll see the power go from 55 to... Uh, yeah, there we go. It's up to 60 with... Um, so it went from, I think, 30, 50, 70, and then I switched it off and realized I didn't have enough, so I added another one and I ended up getting 60. So 20 for each of those reactors. And then we've got the cargo link incoming. Uh, we've got 13 helium in the tank, so that's plenty. I only need 10 to go out, five for each way. Now we're going to set up... Uh, come on, there we go. Hook it back up to... Turning on. There we go. And it's going to pull in stimulant, lithium, and structural material. It will land here first, empty, then head out and go and pick up the resources from Beta, T Beta Turnian. Uh, so now we can head to Leonis to set up the link there. So this is back to Leonis Master Hub. We're going to get a free resource, a free one here. And even though I've got a few links on Decker, and the one you pick is the one with the resources, because you know that's where they're all sitting. Uh, so click on that. And we'll get a ship coming there, and that's going to start ferrying stuff from uh, from Deckerin, from Betatonian, and later when I hook up Schrodinger from Schrodinger as well. And then I'm just setting the uh, carry weight to 500 as before to make sure that, there we go, there are never going to be any blockages. Although realistically, only 30 or 40 uh, tons of stuff come in each time. Again, this is my uh, slightly, well, not modded, but just using a console to adjust their carry capacity. I've got about 10,000 gas, got about 30,000 uh, or oh, 4,000 liquid and about 30,000, uh, 35,000, wow, 33,500, um, large <laughs> solids. Um, you can see a lot of that's aluminium. Uh, I went kind of crazy with aluminium on Androphon. Um, so I got like 9,000. Uh, but the way to farm experience, uh, once you've got all these resources coming in, is as follows. You need to build a, I've built a little room with one of every, um, one of every uh, workbench. Um, so we've got an industrial workbench here and importantly, a bed next to it. So what you wanna do is sleep in the bed for one hour, one hour's fine. Uh, and then also you can drink some alien tea uh, if you have the required ingredients for that, that will give you another 1%. So you'll have, I think 11% uh, experience boost. Uh, and then just build everything. You may have noticed that I was at the bottom of the experience there and by the time I finished building with all the stuff I'm almost completed a level and it's about 6,000 experience a level at the moment so I probably made 5,000 experience in about five minutes and then I'll just go off and do a mission, let stuff flow in, come back uh, and repeat. Um, that is kind of the end of that. Uh, if you have any questions please drop them in the comments, very happy to answer them. Um, I will also link to a reddit thread where I post this um, and uh, please feel free to comment there as well. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Lots of love. Bye!